Assalamu alaikum learners, hope you are well. Um, I'm going to explain exercise 14.1. All the terms and keywords and introduction has been done in a PowerPoint. So please watch the PowerPoint before you attempt the exercise and before you watch this video. Okay, because in the PowerPoint there is the new terms like coefficient, variable terms is explained in there. Right. Regarding the exercise, I just want to go straight to number one. Okay. If you look at number one, A, B, C, D, E, and F, right? It says copy the table and write the phrase as an algebraic expression. So in the in each of them, there are keywords that will tell you what operation you're going to be using, right? So let's first do the keywords. If you look at the word id, that means in the first one, you're going to be using a plus sign. B, 35 decreased by y, you're going to be using a subtraction. M less than 23 will give you a subtraction. Q more than 67 will be a addition. So that's D. The sum of A and B will be an addition. And the difference between 12 and K where 12 is bigger than K will be a subtraction. Right. Once we have, we know what operation we're using. Okay. It's just a matter of following what um, they're asking us. So if you, I'm only going to do A with you. So uh, if you look at A, right, add 7 to X. 2X, you are adding 7. So X is your variable and you're adding 7. Okay? So I've given you a clue for exercise 14.1 as to what to do. And also I've done the PowerPoint to explain to you. Um, how it works. Maybe I can just do a few more examples different from your exercise um, to help you understand. So if they said the difference between um, A and B. Okay, the word difference tells me it's a minus. They're giving me two variables, variables A and B. So it means a, I must A minus, A must minus B, okay? Um, let's go on to exercise uh, number two of exercise 14.1. We can see straight away it is a flow diagram, right? Now, while you have seen flow diagrams before, you haven't seen X before. So let's look at what they are asking here. There's a 35 there, a blank, a 77, a blank, and 147. Then... You have your blank, a 9, a blank, a 12, and then a blank, right? So we know going forward, if you want the output or the answer, you apply the rule. But if you look carefully, right, it tells you this is X. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? It, and if you look at the rule, there's an X in the rule. So... This is telling us wherever x is, I'm going to replace x with this or substitute x with the number and then I'm going to be able to get my output. So in other words, if I can just get like a piece of my jotter out, I'm saying 35 divided by 7. Where did I get a 35? Because it's telling me x is 35. And I'm applying divide by 7 and I will get my answer. Right. Then... I continue doing this here. So let's look at ne the next one here, 77. X is telling us that X is 77. So 77 divided by 7, and I'll be able to get my answer. Let's look at 147. Notice every time I'm taking the rule, right? I'm leaving the rule as it is, but I'm replacing the X with a different number because my X, the value of X is changing. So 147 divided by seven, and I'm gonna put my answer. So this was a straightforward one with one, two, and three, where they gave me the input, they gave me the rule, I had to figure out the output. And how did I do it? By substituting every time for X, whatever value I found as X, right? Now, Obviously, we know the opposite of uh, multiplication is, the opposite of division is multiplication. So if I wanted to get the x, I would have to work in the reverse. So that means I'd say 9 times 7, right? I'll find the answer, right? And when I get the answer, I will check that if I take the answer and I replace it into this equation, will I get, come back to my output number, okay? 
Right. The same example can be done in a table. So I'm going to maybe use my own examples, but it's exactly the same like the table in your textbook. So say I have Q here and Q times 4. And I have 1, maybe I have 4, maybe 6, and 10, right? Every time I'll replace Q with a different number. So Q can be 1, then Q will be 4, then Q will be 6, then Q will be 10. So let's see how I will do this. In my Jota or in my workbook, I can show the calculations as well. Q times 4. Where Q is, I'm putting 1. 1 times 4 will give me 4. That's for the first one. Next, Q times 4. Where 4 is, I'm put, where Q is, I'm putting the 4. 4 times 4, 16. Next, Q times 4. Where Q is, I'm putting a 6. 6 times 4, 24. Next, Q times 4. Where Q is, I'm putting a 10. 10 times 4 is 40. So what am I doing? I'm only changing the value of Q. My times 4 is remaining the same. Where am I getting Q from? I'm getting Q from the top, where it's telling me the value of Q. Okay? This can apply. Obviously, they can. you can use any rule for this here. There's something else I just want to mention also. Uh, we did mention it in integers, but I'll mention it again. If I have something like this here, 8x, it means 8 times x, right? Remember, the x, the, the, um, the multiplication is invisible. So, if I was doing substitution as in b, right? Look at b, it tells us 8x plus 3, right? I won't use the numbers from the example, I'll use different numbers, 2, 1, and 8, right? How will I solve for this here? Again, what are they telling me? They're telling me x will take the value, will take different values every time. So let's look at the first example. Where there's x, I'm going to put a 2. Right? Remember, this is now board math, so I must first solve for brackets. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 3 will give me 19. Right. How do I solve the next one? Where there's x, I'm going to put the value. In this case here, it is 1. What is 8 times 1? 8 plus 3 will give me 11. Again, I'm going to change the value of x. Right? It tells me the value of x is 8. So I solve 64 plus 3. And that will give me 67. Okay. And that's how you will do B. Mm, so that's your complete exercise 14.1, number 1, 2, and 3. Jazakallah.